Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Schatz and I'm an allergy and asthma specialist. Asthma is an inflammation of the airways, a swelling essentially of the airways, making the airways sensitive so that with various triggers the muscles go into spasm, mucus is formed, the air doesn't flow properly and, and that then basically leads to the symptoms of wheezing and tightness and shortness of breath and cough that patients with asthma suffer from. Asthma is more common in adult women than adult men, and it seems in some ways to be more severe in adult women than adult men. It is important to understand how pregnancy can affect asthma. Um, the best information would actually suggest that it gets better in about a third of women, gets worse in about a third of women, and then in about a third it doesn't really change. Well, it can range all the way from really, if it's severe enough, affecting the survival of the baby, because the baby needs oxygen. Less severe, it would be more likely to affect the growth of the baby. Um, but that in itself can affect health both immediately after birth and later. So, so even if it's not severe enough to affect life and death, if it affects the growth of the baby, that can be a risk for the baby. And, and that, well, again, something that sort of chronic low oxygen of the mother can predispose to. There are data though to suggest that babies who are born smaller are at increased risk of a number of problems later on ranging from high blood pressure to asthma. The most common triggers of asthma are probably viral infections and allergies. Um, to things in the air such as mite, which is the organism that lives in house dust, animal dander, mold spores, and probably to a lesser extent pollen. Various other things can trigger asthma such as exercise, various irritants in the air, uh, and strong emotions can trigger asthma as well. Well, it does appear that the prevalence of asthma is increasing. It's not totally clear how much of that is increased recognition, that may be some of it, um, but beyond that it does appear that asthma is increasing. The reasons for that really aren't clear. Some of that may be that allergies themselves are increasing. Other factors may be that, that certain risk factors for asthma are increasing, such as obesity. And I think it probably falls into the two categories of avoiding as much as possible things that will bring on their asthma. Uh, and, and if they really don't know some of those things, such as allergies, uh, it would be very appropriate to be tested so that one could identify those. I would say the second thing does have to do with making sure that she's a full partner in controlling her asthma in the sense that she understands what medicines to take, how to take it, um, and works hard to try to take those medicines and then monitors closely the effect, monitors her symptoms. Um, important aspects of that are how often is she needing to use a rescue inhaler. Uh, if she's needing it more than two or three times a week, then probably her asthma isn't as well controlled as it could be. How often it's awakening her from sleep at night. If it is bothering her sleep more than a couple times a month, that would be another common indicator that the asthma is not well enough controlled. There are at least two categories of medicines that are used, but we would like to know more. One, one are called long-acting beta agonists. They are bronchodilators, but they act in a long-acting fashion, and so they're used preventatively. Um, salmeterol and fermoterol are two generic names for, for two of those. And the other are, are medicines called leukotriene receptor antagonists, uh, Montelukast and Zafirlukast are examples. Um, these are medicines pretty commonly used in non-pregnant women, and they are recommended for use in pregnant women under certain circumstances because of their effectiveness and some preliminary information suggesting they're safe. But those would be two examples of groups of medicines that we'd like to have a lot more information on relative to their safety during pregnancy. The more we understand about how asthma affects pregnancy, the better it can be treated so that it won't do that. And relative to the medicines, the more we can be sure that either some medicines really are as safe as we think they are, or perhaps others are not as safe as we, as we think or as we'd like them to be, um, 
both of those, I think, would, would help them be sure that, that pregnant women are getting the best possible treatment for both themselves and their baby.